Hey there, hello, and welcome. You are watching The Relaxed Mail. I am Brian, and this week we are going to be talking about limiting beliefs. Welcome, uh, I am Brian, and I am <laughs> going to be wearing a tank top today because, well, it's been pretty hot these past couple days, and uh, me being a semi-fat guy, old fat guy, I am uh, I'm already starting to glisten a bit, so I know I'll probably be dripping sweat by the time we're finished. Hopefully it won't show too much because it is gray. But anyhow, uh, real quick, uh, I've been noodling around with the audio levels a little bit. Hopefully I am getting myself down into a acceptable level uh, if uh, the sound is sounding pretty good uh, let me know by giving me a good old like on the uh, and and comment down in the comment section below um, so but anyhow today we are talking about mindsets uh, this is something that will can be the downfall of, of anybody even the big the biggest entrepreneurs out there have from time to time had a problem of limiting beliefs. They their belief system told them one thing, and it's hard not to believe what you tell yourself. Uh, I believe it's Shakespeare who's uh, who said had the famous saying, "Above all else, to thine own self be true," because it's easy to lie to yourself. Uh, it is easy to get into a form of belief that is, "Hey, I'm I can only." I'm, I'm going to only be able to be this good. And there are, there are examples of that all over. Uh, take uh, someone who has taken, um, uh, won the uh, lottery. If you, uh, if they, you have someone who is not used to money and has the mindset of a broke person, they're going to end up being broke within a couple of years. Now it takes them a little while to spend, you know, two and a half million dollars or even $250 million, but it's surprisingly fast for that amount of money. You would think, well, if I had that amount of money, I would, it would, uh, it would be, take me forever. I'd live on high on the hog for the rest of my life. You, well, you can, but most people don't because they don't have the mindset of someone who has money. There are people, rich people have a money mindset. They know how to, what to do. If you ask a, a, a millionaire, I, if you had $5,000, what would you do with it? Their answer would be a lot different than a broke person. Uh, if you were to tell them, if you were to ask a, uh, a millionaire, hey, I've got, you have $500, how do you double that overnight? They can find, they can tell you a way that they can double that overnight or within the weeks. Very close. They could take that thousand dollars and instantly, boom, it would be doubled. Uh, just because they have a different mindset than what a broke person would be. Broke person would go, well, five hundred dollars. How would you double it? Oh, shoot, I don't know. Uh, get out a loan for a thousand dollars and use the five hundred for collateral. Is you know, they would say, do something along those lines, and that's a very limiting belief that is a very wrong type of uh, mindset now there are other mindsets not just with money but with action with things about a lot of it is just getting putting you out into the uh, out and open say you are um, wanting to start up a business most uh, people fumble with businesses because of getting the wrong mindset. They think that they are able to just do, they could take their job, say um, you're, a, uh, you're a baker, all right? You've been out there, you've baked your whole life, you love the art of baking, and you go out and you actually start trying to bake, uh, start a bakery, all of a sudden you find yourself really hating the job and the job fails because yeah, you started out making really good uh, cakes and pies and and even uh, loaves of bread and everything else that you, you bake. And he quickly ends up falling apart because you didn't realize that, the, and your mindset was not set on, 
a business, you were set on a job and you liked that job. You liked doing that particular job. Instead of being a businessman, a businesswoman, you had a business, you were a employee and you wanted to try to get away from the man, but you sadly, you are the man and you can't get away from yourself. And that's why a lot of businesses fail. They are run across a lot of th details that they never even thought that they would have. Uh, even thought I come across, they thought, yeah, you may every weekend sit down and do the books, but you find out that you have to do the books daily and you have to clean up after yourself and the trouble of having to try to find a way of hiring people. There's a lot of those little details that you are that hold people back. But also when it comes to mindset, a lot of people who are afraid to stick their necks out there, and you're gonna hear the word afraid and fear a lot because honestly, that is the root of all negative mindsets. You're afraid you're gonna upset somebody. You're, gonna, you're afraid that uh, you're gonna outshine your siblings, uh, which are a couple of main reasons why people have limiting beliefs. But um, a lot of times your parents, though they mean well, will, can affect your, your, your mindset. But these mindsets are often called, uh, the more popular, or more, well, not more, uh, <laughs> the more well-known uh, limiting beliefs are those that are called the imposter syndrome. And while doing some research, I found, I believe it's on Fast Company, um, a, an issue where, a point where there's actually five different types of imposter syndrome. They are for anything from the uh, the perfectionist, which is one a lot of people would know. That's that person who you know might be wanting to start a blog, and uh, while starting the blog, they haven't launched yet. I haven't launched my blog yet. I haven't launched my business yet. I'm still working on this little detail, or I'm, I've got to get this right. I'm working on the logo. I'm working on this. I'm working on the graphics. I'm working on this button. This button's got to be, you know, just the right shade of blue, and I can't get the right color blue. It's just not right. And it's a perfectionist. You're waiting to get per things perfect, and believe it or not, you're not ever going to get anything perfect. Even the people who are successful don't get it perfect. Ask Pepsi on their last little little botch up they did. That was far from perfect. Uh, ask, 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 ask Coke. Back in the 80s, they had Coke, uh, New Coke. Some people may think that, yeah, that was actually a marketing scheme. But others think they, it was a, they were trying to aim for, uh, try to be a uh, perfectionist. They were trying something better and it ended up not working. And so you, people mess up, you're going to mess up. So don't ever, if you're, if you are held in uh, paralysis by analysis, just close your eyes. If you've got it all typed out, you've had three or four friends look at it already and they cannot, can't find any, any grammatical errors. They, you're, you've even had your grammar, your old uh, high school uh, literacy teacher come in and they can't find a place to put a red mark. Close your eyes, count to 10 and hit uh, launch. Or another little trick you might do if, you're, if you can't seem to get a button to push the publish button, go outside, Tell your four-year-old, hey, go in there and push the publish button on, on the computer for me. They can, they'll, they'll know which one to push every time. Um, or if you're, you tell they forced too young, ask your, your 13-year-old. Um, you'll, get, you'll get that published and you'll be scared witless while it's going. But eventually, about a week or so later, you're going to be after you've chewed your, your fingernails to the nub, you've, you've got to, uh, you're shorted a, uh, a knuckle on, on, on all your fingers, you'll realize you're still alive. Shorter hands, but you're still alive. And that is a good thing, really. So don't be afraid to, to do a, to launch a, a something because of, of, of being 
wanting it to be perfect. It needs to be just right. No, it doesn't need to be just right. Just shoot, aim later. Because you'll figure out, hey, oh yeah, I need to go this way. And it's, there's going to be little details you never thought of. So, so just uh, when it comes to the perfectionist, don't sweat it. Just, just get it. Um, another problem, uh, type of uh, perfectionist is the Superman. I'm sure you've known these people. These are the guys who are, often you call them, he's just a freaking machine. And he, uh, these guys work and work and work and they are just at it and they just, oh, they just grind away at whatever task they are given. Believe it or not, them grinding away often is not a case of, hey, I am, I'm really good at my job and so I just work at it uh, all the time because that's what I want to do my, do as my job. It is actually, if I don't do this, they're going to see me as a fraud and I don't want to be a fraud. I'm not going to be a fraud. And so they work at something and work at something and they, they are just relentlessly after that particular job. So Superman and woman are often they're afraid of getting um, seen and witnessed as being, oh, he's just a Clark Kent. So they want, they need the, the positive affirmation of, hey, and they always get that positive affirmation of, hey, you're busting tail, good job, keep it up, go, go, go. Um, there's there's a, a tiring aspect because these are the people who eventually burn out in very spectacular fashion. Uh, sometimes, uh, some people have even thought maybe Anthony Bourdain, that was what his problem was, is he was a Superman. He apparently, from what I heard, he understood from the reading, he worked himself all the time. Uh, and Perot was sadly um, depressed because he wasn't he was afraid of being seen as this imposter, this faker, and this person who shouldn't be given the, the, the glory that he has received. So there's, there's that, uh, that type of, of imposter, the, the Superman. The next is actually called the natural genius. Now we all know somebody who they take up a golf club and instantly they are pretty dang good at a game of golf. Uh, or the kid who in school when we were growing up who always got the gold star, had straight A's. Uh, a lot of kids these days experience uh, are, are natural geniuses, and that's what this uh, the third type of of imposter syndrome is called the genius, uh, the natural genius. And these are the kids who try something and the moment they run into some type of resistance, they throw their hands up and go, oh, I can't do this, I'm no good at it. And so they shy away from getting something that could, uh, that could potentially help them. To get them along their ways because they try it once and it's, it's just too hard. I can't do it. It's, why should I be, uh, I can't. You want me, and a lot of the other one is those who throw a fit whenever you, they are suggested a mentor. They, oh my God, you want me to have a mentor? Oh my God, I can't believe he wants me. Uh, I got, uh, what am I gonna do with a mentor? How, what are they gonna teach me? They can be taught a lot, but they are so self-judgmental that they are not capable of opening themselves up to new forms of learning. And so a, a natural genius uh, is those guys who are not going to, who you suggest a, a something new, they may try it once or twice and instantly, if they didn't uh, ace it uh, or, or, or feel that they were perfect at it right off the bat, these are the guys who are going to just say they aren't good at it. They, they don't do it and they're going to shun that particular activity. Um, the rugged individual is the fourth style of, of uh, imposter syndrome. Um, and a lot of guys, y'all are, are like this uh, because these are the guys who don't ask for help. I can get this. I can do it on my own. I'm, I'm capable of doing this. I am more than capable of making a table even. 
Well, my wife can tell you very, very easily. Me and cutting a straight line with a saw, I have to have a miter. It has to, I have to have guides. I have to have that type of help. Because if I don't, guess what ain't getting done? I ain't having a straight line. It will sit there and it's amazing. I, I have tried sawing straight lines at acute angles and I can I nail it every time. It, it's, it's horrible. I, have, I definitely know how to make uh, every angle but a right. Um, so these are the these are the guys who are not going to ask for directions um, because we will judge ourselves. We view ourselves less of you know less of a man. A lot of people want to say this is our fragile masculinity. You know one of these things. It has it's because we don't want to view ourselves as failures. It's an imposter syndrome. It's easily to get out of it because eventually you click on you go realize it's a heck of a lot easier if you just go to YouTube and look up how in the heck do you change out spark plugs? And yes, yesterday, believe it or not, I did. I call, I looked up YouTube to see how you change out spark plugs and change out uh, uh, ignition coils for a 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I did it, took me about an hour. It took me twice as long as what it probably should because the, all, the, all the videos of people doing it was about 30 minutes. So it's possible. It, takes you, it may take you a little bit longer, but I was able to do it. I had to ask for directions. So it, there is hope for us, uh, for us rugged individuals. It's just, it takes a bit of a time, a bit of time. Uh, and the last one is the expert. Okay, this is the guy who sadly is just, he won't view himself as being able to, uh, able to fail. He is not able to do, in his own eyes, he's not able to, to do any wrong. He is the expert. Uh, he is, if you question him and, and ask anything about that might uh, conflict with what he thinks and believes, that's where he starts to get very defensive. And that's because he, all of a sudden he's your sh shining light that he may not be quite as of an expert as he thinks, likes to think he is. Um, a lot of people suffer from this also when it comes to, to the imposter syndrome because all of a sudden they're afraid that uh, their boss may witness, hey, I'm not near as, uh, of an expert. They view themselves as being the imposter. They have the imposter syndrome. The name itself came from being the, uh, those who view themselves uh, under the uh, disguise of being an expert. Um, a lot of coaches suffer from the expert type of imposter syndrome. Because who am I? Who am I to? Yeah, someone coming in and out of the house. Um, who am I to be to to have people coming to me for advice? Who am I to be to 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 seek out advice? Well, I'll let you know in a little secret with that. You are an expert. Everybody is an expert in one form, fashion, or another. I bet you, you have someone you go to for computer advice. Well, that person, though he may end up being just a janitor at the local school, to him, he is your computer expert. There's people who come to you that, and ask for advice on how do, you, how do you make your brownies so packed with flavor? Well, you are an expert, though you're just the secretary at the at the bank, you are an expert to your cousin who wants to know how to make those brownies. And he always asks, can you change the, can you add ingredients? And you don't want to know why. So there are experts, but the, all these people suffer from imposter syndrome. And the fear, and the key point of it is fear. They are afraid of failing. They're afraid that they are going to be seen as something that they're not. Uh, they want to be, you know, this one particular 
uh, seen as this one particular uh, person type of person though uh, they're you know they might be known want to be known as the fitness uh, man of fitness though secretly they are that that uh, that junk food junkie you know that classic uh, classic song um, out in, during the day he's mr. natural but uh, and he's <laughs> it's an old song if you, if you don't know what it is uh, look it up it's a it, you might only be able to find you might it should be able to find it on YouTube it'll be uh, the junk food junkie though is what it's called it's actually it's a funny it, about the hypocrisy of, of a lot of natural uh, people who <laughs> are into health but um, there's a lot of things you can actually do to keep your keep uh, the the hypocr the, that sensation that impo imposter syndrome the the mindset uh, the negative mindset that you may have it there's actually ways of being able to tackle that and to get it out of the way and the easiest way is with daily affirmations like you know like Stuart Smalley you know I'm good enough I'm smart enough and doggone it people like me that guy yeah tell you you can find yourself certain truths things that are said that have a positive nature but ring true with what you uh, with what with your with what you know you know that you know that people um let's see here i'm trying to think of uh one off the top of my head and the only one that comes to my head is one affirmation that uh, i've heard coming from uh, the book the big leap is um it's along the lines of I have plenty of money for everything that I truly want um, and it's, that's actually very true if you ever think about it um, if uh, I used to be a smoker and I used to be make under uh, under twenty five thousand dollars a year at one time um, but by George I tell you I knew how when it time came and I ran out of a pack of cigarettes I could be it could be four days till the end of, uh, to the next payday flat broke but I still was able to scrounge up the three or four dollars it was for a pack of smokes um, if I needed to get to work and I was out of gas I knew how to find three dollars worth of change to go put in the tank of the gas uh, the car so I could get to, to work once or maybe even if I was lucky enough even twice if I found a dollar bill woohoo it was even better I had three tri uh, two trips in uh, in that tank of gas um, you found money if there's a push comes to shove and you really need that money you will find a way to get that money you may have to ask someone who you don't want to ever ask but you're gonna you'll end up asking them for that money because you really really needed to buy whatever it was that you needed to buy so the way you correct that is with positive affirmations um, look through just look up positive affirmations and look through them uh, read through them and when you find one that's all of a sudden you're like yeah that's kind of that's that's pretty good that's i like that one write it down and put it on a sticky note and stick that puppy right on your mirror so as you're shaving you can go i make enough money or i have enough money uh, for everything i could possibly need or possibly want uh, yeah and so as you're shaving and or washing your face uh, as you're driving you may have another positive affirmation there you can have all these affirmations around you can use the think up app is another great is an app that you can play and it'll you read into it all the affirmations you want and it goes through and you can set music to the background and it'll sit there and it'll play music and play sing, and tell you your affirmations but the deal, key to those affirmations are you have to say them you have to be the one who actually tells yourself these different types of truths and that actually will start setting in your mind if you ever catch yourself in a negative mindset you're like oh, i can't do this it's 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 going to it's it's not any good i i can't do this know that whether you can or you can't you're right so why not make it to where you can you can you can tell yourself and if you ever catch yourself in the in the negative mindset and you're going to tell yourself don't tell yourself off don't go Jesus you're 
freaking moron. Why are you still doing this? Oh, and you're getting mad at yourself. It's not going to fix the problem at all. I'm going to change my seat a little bit because <laughs> my butt's falling asleep. <laughs> you can you can make the situation worse. You can also make your situation even better. If you catch yourself with a negative mindset, then stop and go, <laughs> you're, gee whiz, dude, you're, being, you're being silly. Stop it. And you can be jovial. You can be lighthearted uh, and add a little levity to the situation by not being nearly as hard upon yourself. And, and just take it, take it easy. You're learning. Okay. You're, you're becoming a better person. And so be easy upon yourself so that you don't scare yourself into back into negativity. So that's what we're starting with this week. Um, so I pr thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time. I'm, uh, we have gone pretty darn long. Wow, we've got a 25-minute uh, uh, video uh, vlog this time. Wow, a lot of information in there. And I apologize if uh, you, you, if you have to go through chunks, take it through chunks. It's it's fine. Um, but I know this was a television episode, and so a lot of just me and my fat head just going. Blah, blah, blah. So take thank you. Take care. Um, Apply some of these, uh, some of these parts, uh, some of these lines of thinking, and you'll find yourself changing the, your viewpoints on a lot of things. So anyhow, I'm getting out of here. You take care. Thank you for watching this incredibly long episode, and we will talk to you later. Bye.